Hello, this video is going to be an introduction to 3D measurements in Image Pro. So here I have a nice 3D volume loaded into Image Pro and if I use my navigation control to look at different Z planes or perhaps to play through the Z axis we can see that we've got a volume that goes from above my plane of cells to below my plane of cells so it should be a very useful and effective volume for using 3D measurements. So I'm going to select the 3D view and let's show the 3D tab as well. So I always like to try and improve the visual appearance of my volumes before I start to analyze them. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to hide two channels. I'm just showing my DAPI channel here. And I'm going to adjust the black point to make my background look dark. And just my white point to improve the brightness of my objects. And then I'm going to hide my blue channel, show my GFP channel. And again, change the black point to make the background look dark. And I just the white point to make my objects look more contrasty and we'll do the same thing for the red channel and then I can show all three channels and you can see my volume is looking great I might also want to change the color of my background so I'll go for a slightly gray background here and I think I'm going to show my volume axes to help me orientate myself in three dimensions. So now I'm going to move on to the 3D measure tab where I'm going to do a 3D analysis. Okay so I now need to tell the software what measurements I'm interested in making on each of my 3D objects. So I'm going to go to the types button and in the dialog that opens I can see all the different types of measurements that it's possible to make and these have been categorized as lines objects and volumes. It's volumes that I'm interested in. So I want to measure the volume of each of my objects. I want the sphericity and I'm going to add diameter. I now need to tell the software how I want to separate my objects from the background. And if we look in the 3D view we have two options here. One is to add volume measurements and one is to add ISO surface measurements. Now each of these options has its own advantages. So volume measurements are much faster than ISO surface measurements. They're capable of counting holes or voids. And they include the ability to measure larger volumes. ISO surface measurements are marginally more accurate than volume measurements. And they also have a slightly larger repertoire of measurements that can be made, such as surface-to-surface -surface measurements. But for my purposes now, I'm going to use a volume measurement. And when I choose this option, I first have to select the channel on which I want to base my selection. So this is my DAPI channel, 458 nanometers. I need to tell the software how to threshold out my objects, so I'm going to start off using an auto bright option. And I'm going to choose the option to execute the count. So as soon as I click OK, we should execute the count and to close edges. So if we click OK, the software uses the auto bright algorithm to separate my ob objects, which are currently colorized with a rainbow color scheme from my background. If I'm not happy with the threshold that's been set, I can adjust it. So I can use this histogram to either decrease the threshold, that will slightly dilate my objects, or I can increase the threshold to slightly contract my objects. I might also want to um, try and eliminate some of these very small objects so I can see that the software has selected some objects which are clearly smaller than nuclei. So I could choose the option to have a range and if I edit the range, so now I'm going to base my range on the volume of my objects and I can see that my histogram of volume here is divided into two. I've got some rather small objects and on the right hand side of the histogram here I've got larger ones and I suspect that these small objects are all just incomplete nuclei or noise. So if I set my minimum threshold to exclude those objects and click OK and let's there we go we can see now that those objects become deselected and I now only have whole nuclei in my count. Let's take another look at my segmentation options and add the option to include clean borders. Clean borders means that anything that touches the border of the volume will no longer be included. So you can see I've got some partially uh, included nuclei here, or some 
some nuclei that are not fully within the volume. If I now click OK with the Clean Borders option selected, then they're no longer included in my analysis. And I'm now only measuring whole complete nuclei. Let's show my data table. And we can see that I now have a table of objects. I can click on each object and its position in the volume is reflected by a blue wireframe. So I can move through my table and see each object. I can also use the select tool and click on an object in my volume and I see its measurement within the table. So it's really important to understand exactly how this count button behaves. The count button actually toggles the count. So if I click it now with a count executed, it will disable the count and I just see my segmented objects. If I click it again, it will re-execute the count. That functionality is replicated by the count button in the top left hand corner of the software. So if I click now, I can re-execute my count and I see my objects displayed with random colors. If I show my 3D options, this is where we can change the color scheme of our counted objects. You can see here that we have an option to set our coloring which is set to random. I could change this to the parent color scheme and I could choose a color of my liking. So let's say I want to color my objects in yellow. If I now deselect and reselect the count, then they'll be counted as yellow objects. I also have the option to include the object's name in the actual 3D rendering of the objects. And we have some other options which are currently not relevant to us. So my preference is to use the random color scheme. So I'm going to reselect that scheme, toggle my count, and my measured objects have random colors. I'm also going to hide the text from the volume. Okay, I'm now going to select a couple of objects and make a relative measurement between them. So let's imagine that this is a particular object of interest to me. Now if I hold down this, the control key and select second object, okay, I now have two objects selected and I could particularly focus on those two by just choosing the option to only show selected and maybe even we could just hide all the channels as well so we just see those two objects in our volume. And you'll notice that with those two objects selected, I now have a choice to make a center to center measurement. So let's select that. And here we can see that the software has drawn a line between these two objects. Currently it's not measuring any features of the line. We need to edit our types. And let's add the option to measure the length of lines. And then we will see that we will measure the distance between these two features of interest. I now like to make another set of measurements, this time based on an ISO surface. So we can hide our measurements volume. And I'm interested in this time measuring the red channel, which shows the metaphase plates in this field of cells. And let's clear the selected line measurement we'll clear all the measurements. Okay, so I'm now going to go back to the 3D view options. I'm going to choose to add an ISO surface. So on this occasion, I want to base it on my red channel. I'm again going to use the auto bright threshold option. Let's see what we get. And here we can see that the software has added ISO surfaces to each of my metaphase plates. I can again select a pair of objects, hold the control key to select the second object. And this time I have the option to make a distance between surface measurements. So if we take a slightly closer look, we should see that we're now actually measuring from surface to surface. We can change the arrow size slightly just to make that clearer. And there we see our distance between the surfaces of the two objects. Just a small illustration that we can do different things by using ISO surfaces or volume measurements. So it was a very quick introduction to volume measurements using ImagePro. Thanks for watching. Please contact Media Cybernetics if you have any questions.